the first uh, two weeks of this course, we learned uh, how to deal with the sing single scalar values, how to do something with the one number or one character. And uh, last week uh, we had the concept of a sequence. We can have a million somethings and then we want to do something for each one of those things and uh, possibly something for that uh, sequence uh, as a whole. So now we need a mechanism uh, to go through the elements uh, of a sequence. So uh, this week's topic, the for loop, uh, is an uh, important uh, control structure that allows us uh, to do something that we know how to do once. We can now do it uh, any number of times. So uh, the for loop uh, did, uh, goes through the sequence of values and uh, then for each value executes uh, the same body of statements. So here in the dev demo, uh, which uh, uh, so originally this uh, course outline was different, uh, but uh, so uh, I haven't uh, changed the name. But uh, this is where all my examples of the for loops uh, are uh, gonna be demonstrated. So uh, let's uh, write the function uh, accumulation that uh, given any sequence of uh, values, we assume here that those values are something uh, that can be added together. So uh, let's uh, put this to the repo and uh, find out uh, how it works. So what would be the accumulation of, uh, let's make up some values, 8, minus 4, 7 and uh, 3. Repo a bit slow to start again. So uh, the accumulation uh, is a sequence uh, whose each element equals uh, the sum of the elements so far. So the first element of the accumulation, 8, is the same as the original value. And uh, 8 plus minus 4, so 8 minus 4 is 4. Uh, 4 plus 7, so notice when we know the accumulation up to the given point, then to take the accumulation and at the next value you get the accumulation to the next point that you don't need to calculate all the way from the beginning. So 4 plus 7 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14 and so on. So the function accumulate demonstrates the most common use pattern of a for loop here. So uh, first, uh, what we have here, this uh, weird looking thing, so I should be much better with this, uh, I promise, in the future. But uh, so what, what is this kind of a string that starts with the three quote marks? So it is a block string that uh, continues uh, including all the line breaks. Normally the string literal cannot uh, contain a line break inside it. You can put that as an escape sequence backslash n if you want one. But uh, this kind of a triple quote string continues until the closing triple quote, even eating all the wire line breaks in the middle. And uh, this one has a special meaning when it is the first statement inside a function. This becomes the doc string, the documentation that, uh, for example, uh, repol it and uh, every IDE will uh, pop up uh, when you are hovering uh, 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 over the function name. Okay, but now the actual function. Uh, this is now a lot of, on the pattern that I was talking about uh, last week. So uh, we start uh, with an empty result list that we then just uh, append the stuff to the end one at a time whenever there is uh, something to stuff in there. So uh, uh, then uh, we need to maintain the current accumulation, the current total. So this is uh, uh, now a good pattern. We see this many times. You have uh, some kind of a counting or tallying. So you initialize with the integer count, tally, total, whatever you call it, as a zero. And then every time you find uh, the thing that you're counting or tallying, then just uh, add one. So we're building up the result list, one element at the time to be returned in the end. So the, the result, this is all that we return. This total is just uh, uh, in the, uh, inside the function bookkeeping. So what is the current uh, to total of the values seen so far? And initially we have a value zero and the empty list. And now here comes the for loop. So the for each element uh, in uh, the given sequence, so uh, you, we make up a name that's uh, in, inside this loop body, so what is nested, so notice the return is at the same level uh, as the four, so it's after, but uh, so these are in the next uh, nesting level, so these are uh, executed, the same block is executed over and over, 
So this is like uh, there is some kind of a service line, so the sequence of uh, customers is waiting and for each element, a customer at the head of the head of the sequence at the time then uh, gets, uh, pro, gets the same uh, service. So in uh, the, uh, the name X is gonna be referring to the element uh, that we are processing at the time. This uh, for loop is guaranteed to produce the elements uh, exactly in the same order that they appear in the sequence. So uh, notice how the calculation depends only on the element value, uh, not the in its position in the sequence. The position never even appears. So X stands for the element value, not its uh, position. Uh, later we're gonna, <coughs> gonna be seeing how to uh, do the calculation if we need the position, but the here the, uh, so, uh, the, uh, the, we just need the current element. That gets added to the total. This kind of assignment, because often we update the, uh, the value of uh, some kind of counting variable by adding a new value to it. So this is shorthand for saying total equals total plus x. So notice in the assignment that's what distinguishes it from uh, from uh, equ uh, equality into mathematics, so that the same variable can appear on both sides. So uh, evaluate the right hand side and uh, whatever the result gets assigned to the va variable on the left. If uh, the variable appears on both left and right, uh, on the right it means the old value of the variable, on the left uh, it uh, means the new one. But uh, so back here, so uh, the, this common type of assignment, the new value of a variable is the previous value plus given value, then there is minus equals times equals and however many other equals. So plus equals uh, increment by that amount. And the new total, so at the result list, uh, we build up uh, piecemeal uh, one element at the time. And uh, then have, having processed the entire sequence, we process a sequence uh, one element at the time, like a uh, leverage journey is taken one step at a time. We don't have uh, magic boots that uh, take us to the seven miles uh, to the goal. No, so after the loop, uh, so then we return the result. And uh, then there is one more thing that this one demonstrates uh, before I uh, end the video. So notice uh, uh, we didn't say what kind of elements they are. So we, we just uh, made a gentleman's agreement that uh, we're gonna be calling this with things uh, uh, that uh, can be added to each other, but uh, they don't necessarily need to be integers. So let's calculate the accumulation of Bob, Tom and Joe, two strings. So strings can also be added. So this plus, the, this uh, total plus equals the same care what it's adding as long as it's adding something. So uh, now the accumulation of uh, now what did I do, uh, do wrong here? Now I have to initialize sorry, this one to the, to the empty string. Yeah, so it did affect something, but uh, no, so uh, the initialization for the default value. So the accumulation of Bob, Tom and Joe is uh, Bob, Bob plus Tom and Bob plus Tom plus Joe. So then uh, we get uh, uh, this what is now called the duck typing in Python. That uh, we didn't say that this has to be specifically a sequence of integers, although uh, this you uh, need to rethink here. As long as it's something that can be added. So other than that, we don't care. So this makes the Python functions nice and flexible. They might be applied in a data types that exist in the future, as long as those data types have a right operations uh, that we are expecting.